Hello and thank you for joining me today. I'm an accountant at Smart Business Solutions and today I'll be showing you in a bit more detail of how to set up uh, leave items within payroll. So heading over to the payroll tab and jumping to employees. I'm going to head over to my employee that I did just set up recently and I'm heading over to the leave tab. The purpose of this video is just to ensure that you are, I guess, on top of your leave set up within your employee files. It's a very common area that a lot of businesses do get wrong. And unfortunately, it does take time and money to go back and correct it. And if your employee has been there for a number of years, this could take a lot of time um, going back and making sure that their leave was accrued correctly if it wasn't. And then it can also create, you know, um, extra liabilities for the business if they have under accrued that staff member or it could be costly if you've actually over accrued their annual leave and they've taken it all. So this video is just highlighting, I guess, common errors um, and making sure that you, again, have set this up correctly. So as you can see here, we have already got our annual leave and sick leave items. So if this employee was casual moving to a part-time, full-time role, and they obviously haven't been accruing leave previously, you will have an option here to have assign default leave type. So very similar to this assign leave type, it just gives you an option to assign the default ones, which will bring in this annual leave and sick leave. Sick leave is referenced as personal leave as well these days in zero. So sick leave and annual leave. Where the magic happens is within this zero hours. Obviously, if your employee has been accruing leave, it won't be zero, it'll probably be another number, but you can actually click into that annual leave option and this will bring up all the settings of how your leave is getting accrued. Our recommendation is leaving this leave calculation method based on ordinary earnings. So you do have a couple of items. So if you are, say, um, providing a set amount each period above the award, um, and it doesn't matter if they, I guess, take a month long holiday unpaid um, where they're not working, uh, it, it really depends on the business. But generally, you're always going to have employees that um, maybe work different hours or they may, for whatever circumstances um, stop work for a week or whatever it might be and you want to obviously accrue their leave correctly based on the hours that they actually do work so our recommendation is always accruing leave based on ordinary earnings um, just so then it, again like i said it does change based off the hours they do work and not the other way around so based on ordinary earnings is the option that i'm going to be walking you through today so then you have two options. And again, like I said, this is where the magic happens. So if this Erin was um, a full-time person, that's great, nice and easy. You just put in the hours they work as a full-time employee. But if Erin was a part-time um, employee, they only work, say, 10 hours a week, um, but they may, during busy seasons, I guess, pick up a couple of extra hours, you want to make sure that they're accruing the leave on those hours that they do work and you're not over accruing leave that they're you know not entitled to. So a really common error um, is actually keying in this hours um, worked in a weekly pay period based off the hours that they normally work. So like I said, if Erin was a part-time employee working 10 hours, you would not enter in 10 hours. So this is where it's really important to read the detail. So always, always, always enter in based off a full-time employee. So even if the, the part-timer works 10 hours, you're still setting this up as if they were to work 38 hours because one day they may work 38 hours and you don't have to make any changes to your payroll and it will just accrue leave correctly. So hours on a full-time employee, and this may be 37 and a half, it could be 38. So really important to review this because zero does opt to 38 hours as a standard. And this obviously is dependent on the business. You can update uh, the leave in the background under your payroll settings. This means every new employee that you do add, um, you can actually head over, I'll jump in to payroll settings. Under pay items, under leave. Again, opening up my annual leave you can um, enter in their normal entitlement. So basically what this is saying, if um, the person was a full-time employee working 38 hours a week, they get four weeks of annual leave a year, this is what they would get. Um, if you don't do 38 hour a week, so say you are on a 37 and a half, 
that would actually be 150 hours and not 152. Small difference, but it does add up over time. And this is obviously dependent on your full-time contract. So you can set this up as a whole to change every single time you set up a new employee or assign this leave type. It's going to automatically enter in the 150 rather than you having to edit this 150 every single time. Hopefully you're still uh, following along. So again, back to my annual leave and editing my balances. So hours on a full-time working week is 38 for this business. And it's really important to pay attention to this part here, whether it's weekly or fortnightly, because if you do pay your employees fortnightly, zero will automatically, depending on your pay calendar, say fortnightly as well. And again, you want to make sure that this number here is aligning with weekly or fortnightly. But this is set up correctly because hours in a full-time employee uh, working week on a weekly basis is 38, so that's correct. And again, like I said, annual leave is generally calculated, you know, for four weeks of full time. So 38 times my four weeks is the 152. So again, that is correct. Say though this Erin is a full time um, employee and say they have in their contract, they actually earn five weeks of annual leave per year, lucky them. They would easily be able to um, update this within this section here. So again, 38 times five would be 190. And this doesn't change anyone else's because I'm within the payroll employees and under Erin specifically, I'm only editing errands at the moment. So that's why it's important under settings to set this up, I guess the rule across every employee. Uh, still always double check it, but then if you do have the once off um, contracts that include, you know, like I said, the special five weeks instead of four, you can update them individually here. So 38 hours, but this Erin only does get the standard four weeks. I'm going to change that back to 152. This always um, automatically goes to paid out. But again, if they were to leave the business, their annual leave balance does get paid out. So this is where that um, information is relevant and how to get it automatically onto that final pay slip. Very similar to sick leave. Again, always just making sure that the leave calculation method is based on ordinary earnings. Um, hours on a full time work week is 38. So that's correct. But you can see here, if they only get two weeks of sick leave, which is standard, this number here is actually incorrect. 38 times, uh, yeah, 38 times two is 76. So at the moment they would have been over accruing sick leave, which again can be costly to the business, especially over a number of years. So again, always making sure that you do review and just paying attention to the detail. So hours of full-time employee works in a weekly period, 38, and how many, uh, hours of leave would they be accruing annually as a full-time employee and 76. And I just really want to emphasize that if they are a part-time employee, you still always enter this in as if they are full-time. If you have a special contract that does pay out sick leave, you can always change it here. But again, stand is not paid out. So it's not going to automatically pull in their sick leave balance if they were to leave the business and you create that final pay slip. If you do have RDOs that you do accrue um, or any other special leave, like the employees up to long service leave, you can actually select um, or I guess create the leave type under the payroll settings that we were in before. Uh, and you can also add that in here. If you're not sure how to set up those unusual leave types that don't happen too often, do just let us know because we are happy to create a video on it. But hopefully this um, I give you Hopefully this video gives you some confidence that you have set up your leave balances correctly. And if you have uh, spotted any errors in your current employees files, do be sure to, I guess, investigate that and reach out to your accountant if you're just not sure how to fix it. Any questions, please let us know. Thank you.